Christmas. So for this month, we wanted to revisit our packing list. Two years ago in August, we did um, kind of our pre-pack, um, or what we were gonna take with us to Peace Corps. And over the last two years, we've been taking note kind of of things that we really shouldn't have brought with us, and then things we're really glad that we brought with us here. So hopefully this will also be in uh, good timing for the TL9s who are getting ready to come to Timor. They should be arriving on October 6th, I think. Uh, but one disclaimer first, this is our experience so far with our site, with our work setting. Those things, So these things may vary uh, from volunteer to volunteer. And also we're going to be talking about um, for one person, like we're two people obviously, but uh, the things that we list, the packing list that we lay out will be as if it's for one volunteer. First we're going to be talking about bags. The first piece of luggage that we would recommend is a large rolling suitcase and preferably one that has a hard cover um, because it's really good later on when you get to site to use to put your foods in uh, to prevent rats from getting into them. The second bag um, is a hiking backpack. So this is the one that I've been carrying around. It's a Deuter 45 liter hiking backpack. And the really nice thing about this is that I can pack it down so that it can be a carry-on for um, airlines. So as you know, you probably know, Peace Corps volunteers get two checked bags that they're allowed to bring with them. So the, the suitcase and then that would be the two checked bags. But like she said, that could still be packed into a carry-on size for like shorter trips or vacations, that kind of thing. Yep. Next one would be just a normal backpack. That would probably be your carry-on on the uh, trip over and good for weekend trips and to go into the villa and stuff like that. The next one, um, guys and girls, this applies to both of you guys is kind of a purse. So I actually ended up getting this out of the Peace Corps lounge here. Um, I brought a purse, but I ended up giving it away because I had too many holes in it. <laughs> um, but I picked this one up, it's really good because I can fit my laptop inside of it and then carry it to work with me and back. And it's not over the top or flashy or anything, so nice. Yep, and the last one, which I think this is a bit of a luxury item, but a toiletry bag of some kind, carry with you, keep all your stuff organized. And yeah, between the six of these, Got plenty of bag space. The six one technically is a wallet. You can oh, bring yeah. that if you need it. You don't have to. Um, Kevin walked around with using a plastic bag as his wallet for months here, so it's up to you. Also, of note, you can buy almost all of these things in Timor. So the next thing is documents and office materials. The documents I would recommend bringing is your regular passport, your Peace Corps issued passport, two copies of each of those passports three copies of your immunization records or your vaccine records. And then if you're a really heavy reader, I would recommend bringing a book so that you can contribute to the Peace Corps Lounge Library. If you're limited on packing space, just don't bring a book because there's plenty of books already in the lounge. Yep, or bring a Kindle. Or bring a Kindle. As far as office materials go, um, I have a few things to show you as to what you don't need to bring. Uh, first of all, Peace Corps is gonna give you loads of like, little spiral bound notebooks like this during trainings we probably got like 10 at least uh, so make sure you save space for those and on top of that they give you lots of little spiral bound uh, notebooks like this as well for your language classes and take notes during trainings that kind of thing so you'll get lots of paper from peace corps when you get here you can always request more if you don't have enough and it's available to buy here so you don't really need to worry that much about stationery and notebook paper and that kind of stuff. Things. Yeah. Uh, unless you're really particular, of course, and bring stationery. Um, same thing with markers. If you're really particular and you want like a fine point Sharpie, an like, actual Sharpie, bring them. You can't really get them here. But if you're not that particular, there's loads of um, permanent markers and dry erase markers. Those things you can get here. You don't have to worry about packing them. Also, we talked about maybe packing one pack of pencils and one pack of pens. You'll get plenty once you're here, but the pins are like this here, which is a normal kind, but they dry out really, really fast and you just do them super quick here. Um, so it's up to you if you're particular about your pins and pencils, bring them. And if most not, of the pencils have really terrible erasers, if they have erasers at all, um, but you can get them here and yeah. Uh, also things like this, like folders and uh, what do you call these? Like little binders or cases. cases. These are available in Timor. You don't have to worry about trying to pack your own. Unless, of course, you're really particular, then you can. Yep. This is my oh. English class case. Oh. With holes Which in is it. Falling apart. <laughs> All right. Um, in addition, if you are a super organized planner, mm -hmm. um, I would recommend buying your planners before you come to Timor. So buy them in America because I have spent 
a really long time looking for them in Timor and haven't been able to find them, which is kind of funny because it yeah, ties they're into the not culture. Available. They're not really planners every time people here. <laughs> um, and the other thing that's been really beneficial to me, which you don't have to bring, um, is these larger uh, post-it notes. Um, so I can jot down little notes and then put them like my English class lesson planning. I do all these on here and then put them in my planner. So everything is in this, which is really nice. As far as camping and outdoor supplies go, this is an area of our original packing where we ended up taking up a lot of space that we didn't necessarily need to. For example, we brought a two-person tent, which we've actually gotten a pretty good amount of use out of, but they're available here. You can buy them for really cheap. They're not high quality, but uh, if you really want to do some camping, you can buy one in Dilly, and they're like 15 bucks. Yep. Um, so you can save the space and the weight in your suitcase on that. Sleeping bags. I would recommend bringing a sleeping bag because you spend a lot of time like spending, staying over at a friend's house or something like that. It's nice to have or a sleeping bag. Or sharing a hotel and Or sharing a hotel. You'll sleep on the floor. Yeah, right. exactly. So having a sleeping bag is nice. Yeah, that's a pretty good thing to bring. A sleeping pad, kind of, like if you have the space, they're really light. If you have like a bad back or something, maybe bring a sleeping pad, but otherwise. Yeah. They're really light, but they're large. Uh, so yeah, you make the call on that. This little thing is a, it's a pot holder. Like you can grip a pot with it. We brought it because I had a friend who had one who camped a lot, and it's actually been fantastic. We use it all the time. It's really awesome. light, uh, so it's really, really great to bring a towel, like a quick dry towel. They're really great. That's what we use 100% of the time for all of our showers. They dry fast. And I would recommend getting a size large or an extra large. Um, the larger actually is probably the better here, um, so you can cover more. <laughs> yeah. We also brought a hammock, which we really, really were glad that we brought along with the straps for it. So if you have one, if you like to use your hammock, bring it. I got a lot of use out of ours. We got a lot of use out of ours. It's broken now, but that, that'll happen. And we debated for a while whether to get a mosquito net covering for our hammock. We didn't need it here. A lot of people still think that it's pretty beneficial, but if it takes up extra space, if you don't really need it. You aren't gonna spend many nights actually sleeping in it. It's just to have it in the day and the kids to play in and stuff like that. Yeah. Snorkel and goggles, bring them if you have your set goggle that like fits your face perfectly and it's really nice, if it's yours. Otherwise, just get them here. You can buy them in Dilly. Yeah. As far as electronics go, I would really recommend bringing a laptop and a laptop charger. Yeah. There's a couple volunteers that came without their laptops. I think that they kind of regret it now, um, so I would recommend doing that. Also, you can bring a, I would recommend bringing a smartphone and a smartphone charger because there are deals here with home companies um, in Timor where you can pay for unlimited data. So basically you can use your smartphone as your computer, which is really great because your internet connectivity in the districts is really limited, but you can use your smartphone as your computer to look up different things and that connectivity is really good. Relatively good relatively good about the smartphone bring multiple cables for it your cables will get destroyed so yeah. just one iphone cord is not enough bring a couple and in regards to your laptop i would recommend also bringing a laptop case to put it in because it can get really really dirty and nasty and it's good to store away at night or your husband can accidentally spill tea on it yeah two uh nice headphones uh one will probably get broken or stolen or really dirty and gross while you're here. Um, so a backup is a, probably needed. Earbuds, not those big bulky ones. Yeah. A Bluetooth speaker has come in handy for Peace Corps volunteer parties, um, whenever you're really craved of English sounds and you can play a podcast or whatever. Dance parties with the kids. So Bluetooth speaker is really, really um, recommended. Also, as almost every Peace Corps volunteer will tell you, bringing external hard drives is really important. So bringing the biggest external hard drive that you can possibly find and pay for probably a really good idea because you're going to share a ton of files and music and shows and movies and everything under the sun. Yeah. In regards to other memory things, I would recommend doing two USBs that are at least 32 gigs, two maybe that are 16 and two that are 8 gigs. You'll get a couple of 8 gig um, USBs from Peace Corps, but it's still good to kind of have them on handy because viruses uh, on USBs kind of run rapid in printing shops and if you're sharing them with your friends and stuff so it's good to be able to have a couple backups yeah and even like one or two two gigs just for that reason just if you have to go to a print shop to print something there's a pretty high likelihood that it's going to get some type of virus on it so just have a few that you can just put a couple documents on just to go print and have it just for that yeah also cars here the way that they play their music is through usb 
USBs. And so if you bring a lot of music files on a USB, that's really great for any trips that you take with people or if you want to make friends with the bus driver. Other electronics, as you mentioned before, Kindle, GoPro, that kind of thing. Um, if you're really into photography, a bigger camera. Mm -hmm. But all of that is totally up to you. As far as tools go, I would recommend bringing a multi-tool knife, such as a Leatherman or a Swiss Army knife, um, some duct tape, which will really come in handy, uh, some type of rope like a 550 cord, a pair of work gloves, multiple carabiners to hang on your backpacks, and maybe like one box of Ziploc bags because they'll come in handy throughout your service and you can reuse them. Um, other tools like hammers or wrenches, screwdrivers, bicycle pumps, nails, nails screws, screws yeah. um, Tire patch kits for a bike, all those can be purchased here. Yep. Don't waste the space or the weight. As for toilet juice, first thing would be some type of airplane sized bottle of shampoo and conditioner. Uh, I'd recommend not worrying about the brand when you first buy it, but just find the bottle that looks the sturdiest, that looks like the opening might last the longest. Mm -hmm. So that way you can continuously reuse it and just buy larger bottles here and fill the small one with it so you can take it to trips to Dilly for the weekend or on vacations when you leave the country or anytime you get back on a plane. Um, the hotels in Dili don't have shampoo and soap, so it's really convenient to bring your own. Also, as far as soap goes, just bring one of these little containers. It's really nice to keep your soap separate from everyone else's, keep it off all the other stuff that's in your bag. That's really convenient. And traveling. And for traveling, yeah. This mirror we brought, and we we're super glad that we brought it. It didn't take up much space, not too much weight. But there are really some volunteers who went all of PST with never seeing themselves in the mirror. And it was really convenient to have. So I'd recommend bringing one of these. Yep. It's been our only mirror for the last two years. Yeah. The other really big one is deodorant. We made the mistake of bringing enough bars of soap to last a year. We did not need to do that. You can buy that here. But deodorant, you do need to bring enough to last you the whole time. Well, maybe not the whole time because your family will send you some packages but the deodorant options here are not antiperspirant. They're just deodorants. So if and you, most of them are the roll-on types, which don't last yeah, that long. Yeah. Um, so bring lots of deodorant. Pack of hair bands, like the hair ties. Um, you can get them here, but the colors aren't exactly the same. It's just black. Yeah, pretty much just black. So if you have blonde hair and you don't always want a black hair tie, bring your own. And men too, because your hair grows out. All of the remaining TL7 men have long hair now. All of us, all of us. <laughs> and all the bug. women, for the most part, I think, have all grown their yeah. hair out. Headband for hot days, just keep hair off you, some type of hat or something. Yeah. Oh, and a hairbrush or a comb. Your hair texture is going to change like crazy here, but yeah. you're going to have to keep it combed or brushed. Speaking of hair texture changing, if you're particular about your hair products, um, such as you want a ty special type of coconut cream or something, some kind of straightener for your hair, um, I would recommend bringing that particular product. If you're not particular about it and you're okay with having sort of dryish hair, <laughs> um, then just forego it. Also, if you're particular about your face creams, probably should bring a two-year supply of that. Um, if you're not, then just use soap to wash your face and it's fine and some kind of normal lotion here. You can get Nivea um, and you can get a couple of other brands of lotions here, but the problem that we run into a lot is the soaps and the face creams oftentimes have whitener in them. Um, and so you have to just kind of watch out for those. Um, you will be able to find them in Dilly though without the whitening component in it. Razors, um, if you're into shaving, <laughs> then I would recommend bringing your own razors, especially if you want like a nice shave or you shave, for example, your legs or your underarms or your face or anything every single day, then bring your own razors. Um, they sell in all of the little kiosk shops here, um, like two blade razors, and they're pretty cheap, like disposable throwaways. Um, they don't give you a nice shave, so it's up to you on what you want for that, but they are available here. In regards to menstruation, uh, you can buy tampons in Dilly. You can buy pads at almost every little store once you're at site. Um, and then you can ask your PCMO, your Peace Corps medical officer, for a menstrual cup. Other things you can ask for from Peace Corps are sunscreen, insect repellent, um, chapsticks, chapsticks, those types of things. Waterproof purification tablets. Yeah. Peace Corps can give you all those once you get here. Maybe bring just a little bit to get you through the first few weeks. Yep. Um, but you don't need to bring a two-year supply of any of that stuff. As well as like baby wipes, 
nail polish, toothpaste, oh, Q-tips, toothbrushes, all those things you can buy here. Yep. Maybe like one toothbrush to get you through a little bit until you get your uh, lay of the land and you can buy your toothbrushes here, toothpaste, all that stuff. So next we're going to talk about shoes and clothes. Okay, as far as shoes goes, Beck and I both have narrowed down our list of shoes to only three pairs. Yep. We both brought like five or six pairs each, but we don't need all of those. First, our flip-flops, just normal, cheap, thong sandals. Bring a pair from like Old Navy or something, they'll break, that's okay. You can buy another pair when you get here. I myself have gone through like 13 pair, yeah. I think. It's what you wear, or at least it's what I wear like 90% of the time. Second pair are a pair of tennis shoes, something you can run in, walk in, hopefully you can also hike in them. Just a normal pair of jogging shoes, if you get it once with like a little bit better tread, you can they can double as hiking boots. And you know, you're not gonna go up any crazy mountains with them that's super cold or anything, but you can definitely go up any mountains here in Timor. Third pair are nice shoes. You don't need polished loafers or anything, but something that you can wear to a business or to church would be great. Uh, if those could also double as something else, like walking shoes or something, that's fantastic. But those three pair are definitely, can definitely get you by. Women, as far as going to work conferences or to church, to mass, um, I would recommend a pair of flats. Stay away from high heels. Um, myself and another girl had Crocs um, flats and they've been really good because the key to them is that they don't cause blisters. And that is really, really important here in Timor because you don't want to have to deal with blisters in these environments. They're not too fun. Yeah, they walking. do a lot of walking. Yeah. So. One pair I want to comment on right quick that pretty much every volunteer feels the need to bring for some reason are Chacos. Mm -hmm. We both bought Chacos or something similar. Neither one of us ever wore them. If Chacos are something that you're used to wearing every day, great, bring them. But um, yeah, if Otherwise, you're going to you go just switch out with your flip flops. Yeah, for everyday flip flops or if you're really going on a hike, wear your tennis shoes. Right. So. As far as clothes go, if you're a smallish person, like five foot two and really petite, tiny, you can find clothes here in Timor because all the Timorese look that same way as well. For men like 5'7", five, 5'10", five, something like that, you can find lots of clothes here. Even um, my size, you can find clothes, but... They're difficult to come by. Yeah. Um, if you're a curvier person or a bigger person, you're not going to find clothes here. Just go ahead and acknowledge that and bring your own clothes. So, some of the clothes that I have to recommend um, for ladies. I would recommend bringing between 8 to 10 pairs of underwear and like solid good underwear. Um, I've been wearing the Aries, um, just sort of classic brief, I guess. The full booty ones. The full booty ones. Um, and those have served me really well. And the reason I recommend 8 to 10 is because um, myself and four other volunteers in our group, female volunteers, had our underwear eaten by rats. Um, so it's good to bring some extra pairs just in case. And I'd say 8 to 10, like minimum. They're small and they don't weigh much. so. If you're fancy dilly weekends, perhaps you would want to bring one to two pairs of nice fancy underwear, and that also goes for bras. Maybe bringing one to two nice pairs of fancy bras. Otherwise, for bras, I would recommend bringing just two just classic um, t-shirt bras um, that you can interchange out. And then, because Timor is kind of a hotter climate, I would recommend bringing sports bras. So I brought four sports bras, and those have served me well for throughout the entire two years here, um, and have held up against the wash. As far as bathing suits go, um, most of the Timorese women here will wear just shorts and tank tops to swim in or t-shirts. And so if you want to bring that, that, that's great. You can just bring a pair of, you know, board shorts maybe, or just use a pair of your normal running shorts to swim in and a t-shirt that you would have already brought. Um, for your vacations and perhaps even your weekends in Dili, if you get access to a pool, it's a really good idea to bring your nice one piece or your bikini. Um, and there have been some peaceful volunteers that have worn their one pieces out to the pools or to the ocean um, in Timor. And so if you feel comfortable doing that as well, go for it. The next uh, two pieces pretty much depends on where you get placed. You're going to want to bring at least one sweatshirt or a zip-up jacket. If you get placed in the mountains, you can just get other jackets or buy other jackets in the capital or even at your site. Um, and then that also goes for one comfortable sweater for men and for women. Uh, bring one comfortable sweater um, that you can wear just over to your neighbor's house that you could wear to church over your dress or your clothes um, or that you could wear to conferences as well just a nice comfortable sweater yeah. as far as tops go i would recommend bringing two to three blouses or business shirts um, to wear it depends on which organization you're going to be placed with if you're going to be wearing those every single day or if you'll never wear them but it's a good idea to bring a couple that are in your size I would also recommend bringing five t-shirts. Um, those will be your everyday wear, your sleep wear, your travel wear, everything. 
and also included in the t-shirts just that's a general category like normal like athletic t-shirts like this or just regular cotton t-shirts henley's or long sleeve t-shirts just like five or six normal everyday shirts yep and then three tank tops are good i have three tank tops and i've been interchanging them I probably have more than three tank tops, but I've been interchanging them a lot, and they're good for going to the beach and just for hanging out around your community because it gets hot. Bottoms. I would recommend having two pairs of long jeans, one for... Rude. That was so long. Two pairs of jeans, one for your nice um, conferences or work days, and then one for your field. And so like going out into the farmer's field and working, a pair that you can just get dirty. Two pairs of pants for work events, so those will be Peace Corps conferences or your weekends in Dilly if you have fancy meetings, or just your work life culture if it's in a formal setting. For women, but I guess also for men if you're into this, um, bringing at least one to two dresses or long skirts. So when you go to Mass, the Team Race community expects women to wear dresses or long skirts instead of pants. Um, if you're really into wearing your pants, that's also okay because you're sharing your American culture. Two pajama pants or just casual sort of pants that you can hang out in. So think like um, soccer warm-ups or those uh, elephant what are they, travel pants, um, those types of comfy pants. Two running shorts and two pairs of leggings. Leggings have served women very well in Timor. I feel like the list of bottoms for men is a little bit different than the leggings and the running shorts and obviously the dresses and the skirts for the most part. Um, and even the jeans and the business pants. For for men, I would recommend like one pair, maybe two of business seat kind of pants that you could wear to church or an office. Uh, also one or only maybe only two pair of hikey outdoorsy kind of mm -hmm. pants, like Columbia type material. Uh, things that dry fast and they're also pretty cool. So if your shorts are dirty, you can just put on those pants and still be okay. Um, two pairs, maybe three of normal shorts, just normal shorts, and also two or three pairs of basketball shorts, and that can cover you for bottoms as a man. And an important note is that all of your skirts, dresses, and pants be hemmed to your ankle, because if they go beyond your ankle, they're going to get really, really dirty and really, really tattered very fast. Another really good idea, a very important piece to bring, is a buff or bandana. These are really good. The roads in Timor are not fully developed yet, so there's a lot of dust that'll be coming off of those roads um, while you're traveling, either by bus or by microlets, um, or just walking along the side of the road. Very important. Absolutely necessary. Finally, our socks. I would recommend bringing three pairs of short running socks and three pairs of long socks. Long socks, like my Sriracha socks here, have been vital for me. Um, I'm prone to mosquito bites, especially around my ankles and feet. And so, as you probably already knew because I had dengue. Um, but these have been really, really important to me and I have five, six pairs maybe that I change out and every single night after I take a shower, I put them on immediately. Oftentimes I'll wear them under my clothes to work um, with my flip flops and sandals, but it's okay. So if you're prone to mosquito bites, you should bring more long socks. Um, if you get placed in the mountains, you can just pick up, buy some extra socks when you're in Dilly. As far as jewelry goes, just keep it simple. Um, I would go for a small, like simple sports watch like Kevin has. Um, stud earrings, maybe four pairs of stud earrings. <laughs> All of the Team Reese women wear small hoops or um, stud earrings. Maybe two pairs of nice earrings for your Dilly weekends. Uh, necklaces, I would bring just like two maybe grunge type necklaces and then one really nice necklace for your weekends in Dilly. Next we're going to talk a little bit about gifts and things to bring to give to your family Absolutely. and friends in Timor. Timor is primarily Catholic, so bringing rosaries, especially those blessed by the Pope, is a very big win with host families. T-shirts, uh, especially of like a favorite sports team or something like that. Sports team scarves. So ties are the traditional scarves that are made in Timor. So they're really into these like traditional scarves. So bringing sports scarves is a really good idea. Yeah, like the soccer scarves you can hang on the wall or something. An American flag, you might want to want one of those anyways for you, but to leave with people after you leave or a map of the US, a map of the world, you probably are going to want to bring one of those anyways. Um, but those having a one or two extra maybe to give to people is a good idea as well. Another Peace Corps volunteer brought a calendar um, and a book that was from her state. And so she could mm. flip through different pages and pictures and show her host family kind of different landmarks and special things um, from her state, which was really cool. 
Another gift that's been really popular, especially with the women, is cooking spices. Um, so if you're from, for example, Maryland, like one of the volunteers, you could bring Old Bay Spice. Or if you're from the South, if you're from Louisiana, you could bring Cajun Spice. Um, or whatever is your favorite spice. Um, I really push for us bringing a huge thing of spices. I would recommend against this now. We obviously haven't used all of it. One of the volunteers did bring little sachets, like um, tiny Ziploc bags of different types of spices. Mm -hmm. That was a really good idea because you have a variety of spices that you can cook with. Or like those tiny little Tabasco bottles. Um, and we brought this bottle for us, not as a gift. If you want some just for your own use as well, same thing, you don't need to bring a giant jug of it. Um, it also, it's really humid here, so as you can see, this doesn't have much of a shake anymore to it. Uh, so be aware of that. Bring, bring small ones and your family can send you more. One thing another volunteer brought, which is gonna be like, depending on the situation, you'll have to read the situation, if it's a good gift or not, but some like small airplane bottles of his favorite type of alcohol. Um, it was especially, an alcohol that represented his culture. Yeah, exactly. If it, especially if it's like specific to a particular culture, then that's a pretty cool gift idea as well. Otherwise you can just find alcohol in Dilly, so. And with the young girls, a really good gift are fancy headbands or hair clips um, or different things that they can do with their hair. In the afternoons, a lot of times the girls will just sit around and braid each other's hair. Um, so if you can bring really fancy clips and stuff like that, that'll be a big one with them. Yeah, that's great. Another good one are sports things. Soccer balls, basketballs, volleyballs Frisbees. are really popular. Frisbees are fantastic because they're flat and light and you can pack a lot of them. Yep. The balls, bring them deflated. You can inflate them when you get here. Um, you can buy those here they're pretty poor quality yeah um, but if so if you brought like one or two really nice ones to give a family that they would really really love that uh some other little gifts for the kids can be string for friendship bracelet making coloring books coloring pencils small like one dollar you can go to the dollar store and get some one dollar puzzles some one dollar little gifts um some cheap kites things like that things that will be interactive with the kids yeah and if you can handle it little cheap musical instruments like, like kazoos or little harmonicas little uh what do you call it? recorders recorders tambourines yeah. that type thing um if you can handle the noise then that's a good idea those are just a few gift ideas but of course you'll think through all those things lastly we're showing you a few things now of things that peace corps gives you when you get here we're including this in the packing list video because you're expected to leave space for it leaving space for the water filter is not very realistic but don't you, there's no need to pack your suitcases just to the brim they're gonna get some stuff when you get here you're gonna want to have some space for it also you don't want to necessarily look like the volunteer who's like just weighed down like crazy when you're walking in the staging also it gives a great opportunity for your family to be able to mail things to you and to make them feel included in the process as well yeah absolutely so thanks for watching if you have any questions about the details especially tl9s as you're packing feel free to email us and yeah good luck with packing